Bear in mind that, that, the, the PR, that as a percentage of income, internet access is still tremendously expensive. Um, and what was your second point? South uh, Korea. South Korea, yes. America is kind of in the middle of this spectrum. There are countries where, yeah, internet access and being connected is less expensive. South Korea is an example. And there are countries where Armenia, and I would, I would say probably the Soviet Union, but maybe not so much the Baltic Free States, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, they are more expensive. So we're kind of in the middle. So your mileage may, may vary, and, but if we look at us as being kind of average or parity, you can see how, how, how a tremendous burden this is on Armenians that want to use the internet to communicate. Any other questions? Bear in mind that if you're going to send a person an email and you're going to type on your keyboard, it's not so much that you're using a Western or an Eastern keyboard layout, but you're going to type Hikagon Armenian characters into your email. They may not be able to see those characters on the other end. And the reason is that there are two types of document coding. One is called the Armenian standard for code for information internet change, or ARMAS, the another one is Unicode. Well, the world standard, and it's been that way for 10 or 15 years, is Unicode. All the Macintosh computers use it, Windows uses it if you turn it on, and um, Linux uses it, and, and, and so on. Unicode is the standard that should be used for encoding international languages because it can do such a better job, and it can code any international language. Chinese characters, Japanese characters, Korean, Vietnamese alphabet, Georgian alphabet, it's all in Unicode. The problem is that Armenians started using Arm, Armski for encoding Armenian letters, which instead of using 65,000 characters, can only have 256. And most Armenians do not have, oh, how can I put this delicately, legitimate software. It's often cracked and they don't have the disk in it. So for Windows especially, you need to check a box and push a button and insert the disk to get Unicode. They can't check the box. If they could find it, maybe they could check the box, but they don't have the disk. So if you're writing, um, sometimes you just break down and use English transliterations to write to something in Armenian, and I'm, I'm doing that with some people that I send them an email, it's in Armenian, it looks fine, I sent it off, and they said, I can't read this, this is garbage, write, write with English letters. That's what's going on. Um, let's talk about educational barriers to forward progress in information technology. Now, on the plus side, the Ministry of Education really does have a decent curriculum, and they do have good textbooks, and they are age appropriate, and I've read the textbooks, and even though they're in Armenian, I can't read them that well. I can look at the pictures and I can tell they're covering the right subject matter. They're talking about binary arithmetic and they're talking about bits to graphic image mapping and they're talking about how to use Microsoft Outlast applications and so, and so on and so forth. The trouble is that that program is woefully underfunded. Number one, Armenia is, only, is not spending enough on education in general and then IT is a luxury. Um, the books cannot be afforded by the average school. The government is not paying for the books. The teachers, if they had the books, could not deliver the curriculum. Remember, they're coming from this older mentality, and they may be the only computer they've seen is at school, and they haven't been through the course to learn how to use it. Sometimes the headmasters don't like students learning computers. They want the computers to look nice and pretty for the donors when the donors come, but for the students to actually use the computers? Oh my God, why would we do that? There's a good program there that's in place, but it's not being delivered to students. So their average experience with information technology in school is going to be, it's one of two experiences. It's either very good because this headmaster or this has thought about this and is doing what they can and is connecting to the international community and they've written some grants and they've got funding and they've got this going or it's non-existent because there is no societal need to forward information technology. Again, you know, people my age are not using the internet. So, question. Why, why can't they not implement Unicode instead of Armenian standard? 
Okay, the question is, what, you can implement Unicode, but you, for Microsoft Windows, you have to have the disk, it either has to be installed out of the box, or you have to have the software disk to add it at your choosing. And I have looked after installation and installation and installation of computers in Armenia, and they don't have Unicode on them. And fortunately, some of the organizations I can say, hey, you know, check this box, put in this disk, and they know what I'm talking about. Most of them do not. But that's why, because it's not on by default. Now, on a Macintosh, it's on by default. So if you're using OS X 10.3, which is really old or later, it's on and you don't have to worry about it. But if it's, you can't send a Word document encoded in Unicode to a person that's got Microsoft Word 2007 running Windows XP if Unicode is off. They look at this and it's like, what is this? Not Armenian, something else, but that's why. Any other questions? Yes? I, uh, uh, I'm just interested to know, uh, years back, uh, they used to make the second generation mainframes, Nairi and Razda. Yeah, I heard about that. And what is the status now on the main, mainframe computer? Do they still have uh, imported, or do they, uh, have they improved on it, or what, what's this? I don't think they make them, but the in institution you're referring to exists and has staff that can program them. And they sell those program that programming knowledge worldwide. But I don't think they actually manufacture the equipment. In fact, um, I'm not sure that IBM still makes System 370 architecture computers anymore. Well, not System 370, but uh, I, I think that's up to Fujitsu or something like that. That that's that all comes out of China or Japan or something like that. But the capability to develop software and hardware procedures. They had hardware. They had hardware at one point. I don't think that that capability exists. The software capability is still there. And yes, you can hire them to do work on modifying your System 370 architecture program or whatever it is if you can't find programming or you don't want to use programming staff in the U.S. or whatever. Yeah, that's, that institution's still there. It was there as of 18 months ago when I checked last, yeah. But yeah, that's there. And yes, they Armenians... Let me, your question introduces a side note, and I haven't mentioned it yet, but I, I should. Under the Soviet Union, Armenia really was doing pretty well. Um, the economy was functioning, people had enough to eat, had clothes, they were able, they didn't, maybe didn't own everything because it was collective or whatever, but they had a place to put their heads at night and they really didn't worry too much. Then the earthquake happened in Gumri, and I don't think that that didn't do stu good stuff for Gumri, let me tell you that. Then um, the Soviet Union fell apart for other reasons other than that. But what that earthquake showed is just what had been going on in the Soviet Union for the past 20 years. The infrastructure was not as good as the stuff that Stalin put in. I mean, Stalin may not have been a nice guy, but if he built the bridge, it stayed up. Um, Armenia went through a very dark period after the Soviet Union uh, came apart. I think this is their 19th year of independence, 2010? Yeah, 19th year of independence this September. It went down for a few years. And then it started this wonderful growth, you know, like, except for this recession period, which has been negative because the whole world's been negative. You know, year and year you grow from at least 10%. Well, we're still not up to the point of where we were at the breakup of the Soviet Union. And yes, people have gotten their homes because of privatization. We talked about how the farmer now has title to his farm and so on and so forth. But as far as a functioning economy, as far as rule of law, as far as um, standards and practices, as far as maintaining any of that old Soviet in infrastructure, I mean, you can tour Armenia, you can see airports and hospitals and, and hotels and so on and so forth that look great from kilometer away. You walk up to them and you can see that the concrete's falling apart. Um, they're not back. But they've done so much positive growth in the past 10 years that next 10 years for, forward, especially once we get out of this recession, it, it's going to exceed where, they, where, where, where we were under the under Soviet time. There's going to be a new era for many Armenians. And I'm excited about that. Anyways, during Soviet times, I brought that up was that yes, they did have this facility that manufactured IBM compatible mainframe computers and they had.